Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to find out SQL Server configuration changes in last hour. Let's say SQL Server configuration changed in last one hour, and you would like to know who changed it and what has changed in SQL Server configuration. And we will be also learning how to look at configuration changes history in SQL Server Management Studio and uh, look at SQL Server configuration change changes history using T-SQL script. We also will be looking at how to check if default trace is enabled. The reason we have the default trace is enabled we need to check is because all the configuration changes is traced by the default trace in SQL Server. If your default trace is disabled, this information will not be captured unless you have uh, your own uh, extended, uh, extended event configured or you, you have your own trace running on SQL Server. So uh, we'll, we'll also be looking at how to enable or disable SQL Server uh, default trace. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's my SQL Server. I'm connected with the Dynamics AX Dev. That is my machine name and SQL Server Test is my SQL Server instance name. In order to look at uh, the configuration changes history, you need to right click on SQL Server instance and go to the reports. This is much easier way to look at a uh, lot of different good uh, uh, changes and a lot of good reports and you need to go to standards and as soon as you click on standard reports you will see all kind of good stuff right here and in in order to see configuration changes history you need to click on configuration history right here and it it will load configuration history right here and I'll be telling you the background that um, where it loads. Basically, it uh, loads from a SQL Server default trace, and SQL Server default trace is uh, uh, resided. I'm going to show you real quick. SQL Server usually reside at uh, program files, Microsoft SQL Server, and your instance name. As soon as you go in your instance name, Microsoft SQL Server, and then click on log. This is the default path of SQL Server log unless you have changed it. If you have changed it to SQL Server, uh, a SQL Server path, then you need to go to your SQL Server instance or default log path. And you can go ahead and uh, um, uh, basically when you go and you can sort it out with the type up here. So if you sort out with type, uh, file types, all the trace files have a little uh, trace right here, SQL Server Profiler icon right here. As you can see that uh, right now there are what, uh, one, two, three, four, five. It keeps only five trace, default trace, by default keeps five trace, and it roll over the file when it becomes one MB. After every MB, uh, SQL Server profile, uh, w uh, default trace, uh, changes the file and delete the previous one. So keep in mind that uh, all the files that uh, let's say that uh, right now I do have a, a file that is 502 and next file is 503, 702, 717 and 721. So I'll be only able to look at the changes from 502 to 721. So if you are looking to um, look at the changes, configuration changes happen Prior to this time, uh, you will not be able to look at uh, using a standard way that I'm showing you. Uh, but if you have your own trace uh, running, that is equivalent to SQL Server default trace. I'll show you that as well. And uh, you're capturing all that information, then you can have you can define your own trace retention. So let's go ahead and uh, look at it one more time. So this is right here. This is. Um, you right click on uh, SQL Server instance and go to the reports and uh, let me go ahead and show you that how you look at the trace information you can uh, basically go ahead in the um, SQL Server trace and open it with if you have a uh, let me show you open as you can see that right now I it says that I have access denied and I will tell you the reason you won't be able to open it like this you have to make some tweaks if you go go to the properties and security as you can see right here that it says that you don't have permission you can go in advance and click on continue and add uh, whatever the user that you have you can select the SQL Server principal right here and um, uh, and add the user in there and you'll be able to let's say I'm going to go ahead and um, add this myself up here
and I will give full control so I'm gonna go ahead okay apply okay okay and if I open it now you will see that it traced has opened uh, with that this is one option that you can go ahead and uh, look at the trace if you go you can't really basically go and in export uh, the definition of it but you can just go ahead and take a look at the properties and event selection these are the events selected by the default trace as you can see so if you ever wanted to look at the default selection of trace you can look at here and Microsoft uh, probably has uh, what event it selects the default trace out in on their website as well if you wanted to take a look but this is how you take a look uh, using SQL Server Profiler so we're gonna go ahead and cancel this and I'm gonna show you how to open the same thing open a trace in SQL Server Management Studio so let me load that script right here So if you open default trace, this is the query. Now we use the function trace get, uh, get ta uh, table. So what it does is basically right here, um, the default latest latest would always be log.trc. So if you wanted to look at that, you can go ahead and run this query and you will be able to see all the data in that trace right here, all the events that is capturing right here. And uh, if you wanted to look at the different trace, let's say that uh, you wanted to look at the uh, the trace that you have you need to provide just the trace name in our case right here let's say that um, I'm, I want to look at log underscore 57 so I'm go going to go ahead and provide this um, uh, trace name right here and this is the easiest way you don't have to tweak any permissions that I showed you earlier uh, this is much easier way to look at the trace data basically uh, the definition and all that uh, from here so this is the way to look at the trace uh, using T-SQL script so let's go ahead and load our script the T-SQL script that will give us the history of configuration changes of SQL Server so we're gonna go ahead and open that SQL Server configuration history this is the uh, uh, basically I captured it from uh, SQL Server Profiler It's um, very rare that somebody is using a T-SQL script that was captured by SQL Server Profiler extended events is a much better answer um, and um, uh, again let me uh, also uh, let you know that uh, in future um, is SQL, this is SQL Server 2014 and Microsoft still has this uh, default um, uh, trace, but uh, they are saying that uh, it's going to be obsolete. They're not going to use default trace. Instead, it's going to be extended events. If you don't know what extended events are, please watch my video. I have configured uh, different extended events for the demo as well. So this is um, this is the script. We're going to go ahead. T SQL script. This will be available on our blog. So I'm going to go ahead and run this script. As you can see, that it gave us the same same output as we got it from our um, report so right here and if now next thing we wanted to look at is um, how to basically uh, configure uh, default trace or check default trace if it's enabled or disabled right here is the script uh, first of all it's advanced option uh, the default trace is an advanced option. If you wanted to change any option that is advanced option, you need to let SQL Server know you have to enable that and before you can make any changes to that. So what we're going to what we're doing in this script is changing advanced option to one and then after that we're going to go ahead and say that okay, tr go ahead turn the trace enable to one and zero would be disabling it and then this is enabling it and after we uh, have done that we're gonna go ahead and reconfigure so that this change right here will take place right away without SQL Server services restart and then after that once we're done uh, playing with the advanced options in SQL Server configuration then we can go ahead and uh, close basically uh, right here uh, disable the advanced uh, sh uh, show advanced option in SQL Server. So th this is the query that you use. Let's go ahead and 
run this as you can see that it's uh, it's already enabled that's why it says one to one it won't disable it you can go ahead and basically put a zero up here if you wanted to do that but uh, I just wanted to show you that uh, this is the script that we will use uh, in order to enable or disable default trace in SQL Server and default trace uh, uh, basically if you look at uh, the reports right here it captures all this information as well this is all coming from the defaults uh, uh, trace in SQL Server and uh, that's that's basically about it we looked at uh, SQL Server configuration changes uh, configuration changes history using T-SQL and we talked about uh, the default trace whether it's enabled or disabled and um, up here is uh, how to enable and dif uh, disable the default trace in SQL Server using T-SQL script again all these scripts will be available on our blog which is www.sqlage.blogspot.com and I hope this video helps.